Next up, House File 552, uh, Representative Katiza Watoon, PFAS and juvenile products prohibited. <coughs> Welcome, Representative Katiza Watoon. I will move that House File 552 be recommended to be re referred to the Committee on Commerce, Finance, and Policy Committee. Representative Katiza Watoon, to your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. Uh, it's great to be here in environment, in person. Um, I know we had a great conversation on this bill last session, and um, I'm pleased to, to bring it back to be before the committee, um, and I'm encouraged that we can get some good work done together this year. Um, I, I'll just give kind of a brief overview. Um, House File 552 is a ban on the usage of PFAS in juvenile products. Uh, the language is pretty clear, but you know, basically this, this is um, a product that is designed or marketed for use by children under the age of 12. And with, you know, with some of the concerning information that and research that has been done and come out and saying that um, PFAS has now been found in breast milk. Um, and and it's, it's really, there's a lot, um, a number of bodily challenges that this can cause, and just knowing as a as a mother that, you know, we we don't know what we don't know, and so when we buy a product, we, when um, someone gives a gift to our child, we have the expectation that hopefully it's safe, and so I mean for you know we've been we've been unknowingly um, keeping some of these products in our home, and I think that. When we know better, we can do better, and I'm, I am appreciative of the committee's consideration. I'm looking forward to the conversation today, and um, I'm just I'm going to turn it over to the testifiers. Uh, we have several testifiers. First up, Amara Strand. Hello, uh, Mr. Chair and members. Um, my name is Amara Strandy. I am uh, 20 years old, and um, when I was 15, I was diagnosed with fibrolamellar hepatocellular carcinoma. This is a rare form of liver cancer, and it has no form of treatment or cure. I am here today like anyone else, it is not uncommon for me to ponder what may have caused my cancer. I look back today and I wonder what sort of toys I used in my youth that contained PFAS. The toys that would ultimately assist in creating my condition. When toxins in the environment hit a person's DNA at a particular vulnerability, a cell mutates resulting in cancer or other serious illnesses. Similar, similarly, one of my cells mutated and cancer began to grow. Growing up, not only was I a victim of PFAVs, but I also lived in a 3M plume and attended Tartan Senior High School, where I met many classmates affected, directly affected by PFAVs. Some result from family members and friends developing cancer, and some developing cancer themselves. We now understand these chemicals to be PFAVs. Unfortunately, people being subjected to dangerous chemicals unknowingly happen far too often. It's a repeated offense that has festered our land, water, and bodies for decades. I care about this issue because it has personally changed the direction of my life and the lives of everyone around me. PFAVs robbed my sister and I of a normal childhood in our teenage years. Banning PFAVs in juvenile products is just the beginning of addressing the toxic waste that plagues our communities. I insist you stand against these toxic chemicals and demand change. Together we can make a difference and protect ourselves and future generations from the devastating effects of PFAVs. Corporations must stop the production of these, of these toxins and be held accountable when it comes to protecting our youth. I never want to see another child undergo the horrors of childhood cancer again. 
protecting our children from PFADs is just a start and, address, and addresses the bare minimum of a much larger issue at hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Strandy. Chair Hansen and members of the committee, my name is Michael Strandy and I am the father of Amara Strandy. I'd, I would like to start out by just acknowledging um, the passing of uh, Senator Durenberger this morning. And uh, he was a great champion for health care, health reform in our medical system, which I've had to face very intimately over the last five years. And it's greatly needed, but that's another issue for another time. After Amara was diagnosed with fibrolamellar carcinoma, my wife and I did what any parent would do. We wanted to know what caused this insidious disease that was attacking our 15-year-old daughter. We got in touch with Dr. Sandy Simon, a leading researcher in fibrolamellar car carcinoma at Rockefeller University. He discovered that the cause of this type of cancer was a breakdown in a person's DNA that comes about from cells in the body mutating, then replicating until it does damage to the DNA on a molecular level. We wanted to know if there was anything that Amara was in contact with that may have caused the breakdown of her DNA. What we know about the PFAS chemicals is that they can and do attack human cells, causing them to mutate and then replicate. We wanted to know what products in the markets contained PFAS. What we discovered is PFAS was found in products such as cleaning products, water resistant fabrics such as rain jackets, umbrellas and tents, grease resistant paper, nonstick cookware, personal care products, shampoos, dental floss, nail polish and eye makeup. Stain resistant coatings used in carpets, upholsteries, and other fabrics. And some of the most surprising products where these chemicals can be found, Halloween costumes and children's toys. When did my wife and I discover how pervasive PFASs are? Only recently in the past few years. Knowing what I know about how deadly these forever chemicals can be, I would have been more diligent as to what I was bringing into my home and certainly would have been more cautious about what toys I would have allowed my daughters to play with. In my naivete, I made the assumption that manufacturers would never intentionally use or not be allowed to use such harmful chemicals that could have a horrifying effect on my family. In navigating what is harmful and what it is not, it would have been extremely helpful to have known that at least the government was doing all it could do to ensure that toys were safe for my daughters to play with because they did not contain deadly PFAS chemicals. I urge you to support House File 552. Thank you. Andrea Lovell, Minnesota Center for Environmental Advocacy. Welcome. Thank you, Chair Hansen. My name is Andrea Lovell. I am the Legislative Director at Minnesota Center for Environmental Advocacy. Minnesota Center for Environmental Advocacy is a nonprofit organization with almost 50 years of experience using law and science to protect Minnesota's environment. MCEA supports this bill. It takes measured yet significant steps towards addressing the public and environmental health crisis. As you've heard today, PFAS, perfluoroalkyl substances, is an umbrella term for a class of chemicals. They are forever chemicals that do not degrade over time and are difficult and expensive to clean up. Moreover, they are water soluble and they bioaccumulate. 
meaning that builds up in your body over time. It doesn't get flushed out. They also transfer from mother to child and through breast milk. These chemicals are poisoning our drinking water, making our fish unsuitable for human consumption, and costing taxpayers millions of dollars in cleanup and associated costs. Minnesota consumers are likely unaware that the products that they're buying for their children contain synthetic chemicals associated with the battery of health, uh, adverse health outcomes. I am a mom of a beautiful two-year-old daughter. It deeply concerns me that my daughter could be exposed to PFAS chemicals in the products that I buy to care for her, and I may not even be aware of it. Working in an environmental organization and also being a parent makes me very hyper aware of these situations, and it literally keeps me up at night. No Minnesota parent should have to worry that their children's pajamas, crib mattress, mattress, or toys will one day cause them to have cancer. That is a failure of regulation, not of ours as parents. These bills directly advance public health by reducing pathways of direct exposure for Minnesotans. The MPCA's PFAS blueprint begins monitoring of the problem, but watching the flood rise in the boat doesn't stop it sinking. First, you need to stop her the hole. Without stopping the use of PFAS, cleanup is not the way out of the problem. The PCA stated in its PFAS blueprint, the pollution must be prevented from the outset through restrictions or bans on PFAS uses. That is precisely what this bill does. In closing, I would like to remind everyone in this room that we can thrive without PFAS chemicals in our everyday products. PFAS are manufactured chemicals that were never truly necessary. These bills aim to restore common sense by eliminating chemicals from products Minnesota's use in every day. I urge everyone to heed the calls from our state scientists demanding legislative help in combating these insidious chemicals from moving this bill forward. Thank you. Havana Stark, Clean Water Action State Director. Chair Hansen and members of the committee, I'm Ivana Stark, the State Director of Clean Water Action. PFAS chemicals are a threat to pregnant women and children. When PFAS is in the mother's body, it enters the fetus through the mother's cord blood. PFAS has also been found in 100% of breast milk samples tested. Studies have found links between PFAS exposure in cord blood and changes in vital body molecules called cord blood lipids, as well as harm to the fetal and childhood development. PFAS exposure in children has been linked to behavior problems, lower IQ, learning disabilities, a reduced immune system response, low birth rate, childhood obesity, and type 2 diabetes, and of course, an increased risk in childhood cancer. These health impacts create long-term financial and emotional costs for the toy long after the toy is discarded. These are some toys I took out of my son's box. He was not super happy about watching Elmo walk out the door. Um, but these are toys that he routinely plays with, puts in his mouth, brings in the bathtub, chews on, touches, then puts his hands in his mouth. We owe it to our children to keep these dangerous chemicals out of their hands. Toys that are um, manufactured and distributed, typically from China, the cheaper the toy is, the more likely these toys are to have PFAS. So I urge you to support House File 552 so um, that we can protect our children. Thank you. Thank you. Tony Quillis, Minnesota Chamber of Commerce. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, for the record, again, my name is Tony Quillis. I'm the Director of Environmental Policy at the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce. Just a couple of brief comments, Mr. Chairman, on House File 552. Previously, when we've regulated uh, products here in Minnesota, this one's under Minnesota Section 116 statutes, uh, Section 116. But on, uh, previously under 325F is where we normally do that. I'll give you a couple examples of BPA, formaldehyde, most recently was food packaging. 
a couple of the um, language that is including there to make it parallel to this that's unfortunately not in this one right now, but I'd like to thank Representative um, Katiz Watoon for having conversation with me a couple of times, unfortunately, due to crazy schedules. It's usually been um, as we've been walking by each other. And this is also what I testified to last year, Mr. Chairman, is in those bills, uh, BPA, formaldehyde and food packaging, intentionally added definition has been included in those. And as you'll see throughout most of these PFAS bills that we've talked about over the last couple of years, also intentionally added is included in the definition. And then also, Mr. Chairman, uh, on the last page on the effective date where it talks about January 1st, 2025, I always like to point out for my friends in the uh, retail uh, industry, we always include a, a manufacturer retail lag. You can never do just a stop of a manufacturer. This would allow a stop for the manufacturer and then a sale through to get rid of the product that's in the chain of commerce. And we've done that again also for BPA and formaldehyde and food packaging. Then the last two points, Mr. Chairman, just to make them, at least in my research, a couple other states that have done this, Colorado and California, to be consistent with them, I testified last year a uh, de minimis of 100 parts per million is what we had talked about. And then also um, we talk about what, um, what juvenile product is not within there to get some clarification around what direct contact is there. Uh, and I can't, I'm going to mix up my C's. It's either Colorado or California, Mr. Chairman, um, further clarified the direct contact there for what is not um, a product there affected. So, Mr. Chairman, thank you for the time. I appreciate you uh, and appreciate um, Katiza Batoon, Representative Katiza Batoon, working with me on this. I think the next stop is commerce. And so her and I will hopefully have not hallway conversations, um, but her and I will keep having conversations um, about this as we move forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Edelson. Oh, you, sh you should definitely stay up there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, well, first of all, I guess I, I would like the MPCA to say if there's any amount of PFAS that is safe. And then before we go to that, you, we, I just want to talk to you. You said um, the clause that you wanted to have added, um, intentionally added. Is that to make sure that uh, members, if they were having a product, your chamber members, if they had a product that was in something else that they were making, they didn't know that's what would cover them? Is that what you're saying, Mr. Um, Qualis? There would be... Let's see, how's the best way to describe this? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Representative Edelson, there is a, an end product. PFAS is not intentionally added into that product, but as it's moving through a conveyor belt or as being assembled, there is a chance that it touches that product. It's not intentionally added to the product. And we've done that through, like I said, in, in the PFAS bills that we've talked about the last couple of years, intentionally added is the key there. Mr. Chair, um, Mr. Quillis, um, you had said a sell-through, so that you would have a sell-through. And I just want you to know that I would be very opposed to that. I'm just going to tell you that right now. So if that language comes... I will find it and make sure that we try to stop it. So I just want to be very clear on this. Maybe if it's something that we have to work on, um, that we as a state could buy those products and figure out how to dispose of them, maybe there's a different solution. But a sell-through of making sure that Minnesotans have products that are going to make them sick in their homes is not a good idea. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative Fisher. Thank you. Representative Finke. Thank you, Chair Hansen, and to the testifier. Um, Representative Edelson made my point. We are stopping the production of dangerous chemicals. We should not ensure that we sell through all of the dangerous chemicals. Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Chair. And, uh, you know, thank you for your, uh, your, your bill, Representative. Uh, I'm glad that we are hearing testimony from everybody today, Mr. Chair, because this is, this is a, this is a bill that has broad reaching effect. And it's something that really does need to be thoroughly discussed. And even if there are certain uh, words that are concerning to us, we need to fully understand the impact. And, you know, 
it's, uh, it's a conversation that started a while ago, and I've obviously interjected uh, in, in its discussion referencing products that I personally make. And I know that while the intentions of this committee are very good, we have to be very deliberate in how we approach this problem and make sure uh, that we are uh, being careful in how we accomplish our end goal, which is mutually shared. Mm -hmm. um, and I appreciate that we're not the first ones to discuss this. There are a number of other states that have gone through this process and that are uh, sharing the concerns that have been expressed here today, California being one of them. And I believe that it would make sense, and I hope that the bill author is open to working with others in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in this subject area to try and, and make sure that we're getting at those shared goals. Because they're, they're, whereas we're hearing in testimony today, there's, there's concerns. And I have uh, shared concerns on both sides of this. So uh, I would hope to hear that commitment today. I'd like to see something happen nationally, and I brought that up the last time this bill came forward. I'd like to see the federal government. And I would have thought that in the last few years that that was going to happen. Quite honestly, that was an expectation on a personal level, and it didn't. And maybe there's others that know why. I don't. I can't speculate. But uh, that leaves us, well, what is working? And it appears that, that California has addressed this. And I hope that we can come close to working on this intentionally added issue and making sure that there is some uniformity as, as states are moving forward with their plan to try to protect children, to protect families, protect moms and dads. Representative Katiza Watu. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Representative Heinzman, um, for, for sharing your thoughts. Um, I know, I mean, I think that we had a, I, I appreciate you sharing your experience kind of in, in manufacturing on, on a small scale, and, um, and certainly as a, a small business owner, I know that it's not your intention, being a father, um, too, to, to be exposing anyone's child to, um, unintentionally to, to PFAS. So I, I'm one of the things that I think throughout the, the retail chain we do need to make sure of, and I think that you know, we, can, we can definitely discuss the, the wording that uh, Mr. Quellis has um, brought to my attention as some other states have done. But I think we wanna just make sure that wherever in the chain we can make the most impact um, is where we wanna do that. So um, I, I think I, I would welcome further um, collaboration. Are there any questions from members? Mr. Chair. Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would just comment, at that I certainly appreciate that, Representative. That's really what we need, I think, is, is that collaborative effort to make sure we get at the heart of this issue together. I think we're better on this, and uh, I'm thankful for that commitment. Any other questions from members? Mr. Quillis, uh, you know, last time we had this in front of us, I think I asked you, is there any naturally occurring PFAS, POFLAS, for fluoral alkaline. Is, there any, is this a naturally occurring compound? Mr. Chairman, I think we weren't in this, and I forgot about my homework that you gave it to me, but I do not think and PFOA and PFOS are naturally occurring. Now, I could be corrected on that, but that's just off the top of my head. We create. Um, is there anyone in the audience who would want to testify? Mr. Diamond, I see, is coming forward. Thank you, Diamond, Chair. Welcome. Tom Diamond, St. Paul. Um, I didn't know which one of these bills to uh, speak on. Uh, both, all three of them are uh, important bills to deal with uh, PFOS. And uh, just to uh, uh, speak a little bit about how important this dealing with the, the issue of PFOS is and how big a problem it is, um, I'd like to speak about uh, uh, in St. Paul, we have uh, 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 two Superfund sites that uh, part of the reason why those are Superfund sites is because of PFAS 
in uh, uh, in it, and that the manufacturer of the product uh, 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 dumped it there. The, to the credit of the legislature, $800,000 was provided to do a study last year to start the study to remove this material, clean this uh, 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 up. But just to show you the craziness, if you think you got this PFAS under control, let me tell you. So right next to this, in a national park, a state critical area, a regional park, there is being dumped 80 million gallons of PFAS pollutant into our aquifer. 80 million gallons of it into our aquifer. Um, uh, we have, uh, uh, in our part of uh, St. Paul, we actually have uh, wells. Uh, to the credit of MPCA, they do uh, test the wells and they're polluted. They're contaminated by uh, uh, PFOS, uh, P PFOA, et cetera. Uh, and as a matter of fact, five different uh, uh, compounds are found in our particular well. Uh, to their credit also, they will be providing uh, us with uh, 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 whole house uh, water filters uh, for 30 years, catch his. There is so much demand for this, they can't get them installed. So we don't have it. We drink uh, bottled water, that's what we have to go by, use and stuff. But even if the, that gets done, um, if you think about, so the pollution that's in here not only affects uh, because it bioaccumulates. You know, if you say, okay, you got this fraction, whatever it is in the water that you're in, but you keep drinking water and it keeps building up and building up and building up. Also, if you've got a garden and you're growing vegetables or whatever you want to do, you water that and the PFOS is going into the ground and polluting your soil permanently. The other thing that it does is when you jump, what I was saying, this 80 million gallons of this mix into the aquifer, they're dumping it directly into the aquifer, the way the compound works, it travels very easily through the uh, soils and into it. So it's just like putting this product on there and it directly going in down into the aquifers, poisoning everybody, not just us. It's an it's a amazing uh, thing. So we, uh, the residents, uh, some of the uh, people in the city and stuff uh, wanted to do something about this and we committed to cleaning up the area. And the city was told, you have no authority over permits for people to dump that in your aquifer. The city has no authority. Normally the city has authority to permit and review. So not only are there, are there no permits, there's no review. There's no ability for the public to testify on this. That's how out of whack this system is today. So, and, Mr. Mr. Diamond, so we've got the bill sure, on the juvenile sure. products. I think we're going to have several bills on PFAS. Uh, You're welcome to come back and focus on the water because we're going to have those discussions. Um, and I've got like 12 minutes left to get another bill through. So I'd, I'd invite you to come back on the water. Thank you, and Will. And my real point is, this is coming at us from a number of different directions. So if you just look at it, as important as to address it here, you also have to address it in those other areas. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to testify on the bill? Representative Katiza Watoon, any closing comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, committee members, uh, for a brief conversation today. I know you have a lot of work to um, ahead of you um, in, in considering these proposals. Um, I know Representative Edelson had asked about um, if there was a safe, any, any safe limit of, of PFAS and we um, uh, didn't get to the Pollution Control Agency, but I know that they're here and potentially they can um, just answer that if they come up to testify on the next bill or sometime in the future. Maybe in the next but, bill. If they um, yep, that's totally fine with me. Um, I just, I, I appreciate the time. I appreciate uh, Representative Heinzman's um, consideration and kind of working together on this as we move forward. Like I said, kind of in, in anywhere in that 
manufacturing to retail chain, I think wherever we can make the biggest impact is where we want to um, put our focus. So I think um, you know, we put our heads together and, and hopefully um, improve upon what some other states have done before us. Because, um, but I think that that's a great place to start. So thank you so much. I renew my motion that House File 552 be recommended to be re-referred to the Commerce, Finance, and Policy Committee. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Ayes have it. The motion prevails. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Chair.